One, two, three, testing. Can hear you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elon Levy. I'm a spokesman here for the Israeli government at the Prime Minister's office. Thank you very much for joining us for this daily briefing. Uh, we'll start with a brief update and then move on to q and I'm sure many of you have questions. Uh, first of all, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad strike on the Al-Akhli Hospital in uh, Gaza is an unspeakable tragedy. Our sympathies are, of course, with the victims. Hamas and PIJ rockets regularly misfire and maim and injure Palestinians inside the Gaza Strip. That's nothing new. In this war alone, the IDF confirms that 450 rockets have misfired inside the Gaza Strip, causing uh, loss of life and uh, destruction as well, including that rocket that we saw the debris striking the car park of the Al-Akhli Hospital yesterday. Now, the IDF and independent sources have produced abundant evidence confirming that Islamic Jihad was indeed responsible for the blast we saw last night at the Al-Akhli Hospital in Gaza City. Those resources include a very detailed briefing from the IDF spokesperson, uh, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari today. We also declassified signals intelligence, a recording of a phone call between Hamas terrorists discussing the failed launch from a cemetery behind a hospital. We also have a visual analysis following the Israeli Air Force's investigation of the event. There is no evidence, none at all, of any sort of impact crater at the site that one would expect from Air Force munitions. We also have a map showing the various failed launches inside the Gaza Strip just over the last 12 days. As I said, 450 of them. An aerial image mapping IDF radar footage showing the trajectory of the rockets that were fired from the Gaza Strip at 6.59 last night and the hospital in the path. And just in the last few minutes, the IDF has released images from our own aerial footage showing the damage from the failed rocket launch at the car park of the Al-Akhli Hospital, showing quite clearly there is no crater that one would expect from any sort of military strike. The buildings around the car park are clearly not damaged in the way that they were initially reported with the hasty reportings uh, yesterday. Uh, the evidence is unequivocal. If anyone is missing any of the evidence, which is uh, all over the internet, the IDF has made freely available. Please do feel free to reach out to the Prime Minister's uh, office. As far as we're concerned, this is not a murder mystery. It is indeed case closed. This was an Islamic Jihad rocket that misfired inside the Gaza Strip and not an Israeli airstrike. Uh, as British Foreign Secretary James Cleverley has said last night, too many people jumped to conclusions around the tragic loss of life at the Al-Akhli hospital. Getting this wrong would put even more lives at risk. Wait for the facts, report them clearly and accurately. Pointing fingers prematurely only fuels regional instability. And I think that is a salutary warning for our very strong ally, the British Foreign Secretary James Cleverley. And moving to President Biden's visit today, we are, of course, immensely grateful to the President of the United States, our greatest friend and ally for visiting Israel while it is at war. This is almost an unprecedented visit from a leader of the United States to an active area of hostilities to which the United States is not a party. It is, as everyone said today at the meetings, a very clear statement of the United States support and solidarity and the president's moral clarity and leadership from the very beginning after the October 7th massacre. It's a, a clear expression of the deep and enduring friendship that our nations share. Uh, importantly, this support, which has been both moral, diplomatic, material, reflects the overwhelming will of the American people and our great allies' determination to help us in our right, the exercise of our right to self-defense in the wake of the horrific October 7th massacre, the death toll now standing at over 1,400 Israelis, over 4,000 people injured and around 200 currently hostage inside the Gaza Strip. And it's very important that coverage not forget that this is indeed one of the world's uh, greatest hostage crises that we've ever seen. Uh, that brings us to the end of our update, and we'll now take any questions. Please do uh, raise your hand in the Zoom or submit questions, and we'll take them now. Uh, Coach Winehouse here, I've raised my hand. I don't know if you see that. Go on. Please. Oh, uh, Coach Winehouse from Globe Banner. 
my, my question uh, is related to uh, the potentiality of non-combatants leaving Gaza. Please, Nathan, if we can have and the first my... question, please. Are, are you able to hear me? No, we appear to be having a minor technical difficulty. I'm afraid I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, let me try my other uh, my Apologies, other it seems we're still stuck in 2020, being stuck on mute in Zoom. Our apologies. Uh, are you able to he hear, hear me now? Perhaps we have any written questions until we're able to sort out the technical issues. We know everyone's time is precious. Okay, we have a question about the extent of President Biden's pledges for additional military aid during this visit and whether Israel has agreed to let humanitarian aid through to Gaza. First of all, the President of the United States has been very clear from the very beginning, from his initial remarks at the White House, which moved everyone here tremendously, making clear that he'd instructed the U.S. Army to make sure that Israel has all necessary supplies that it needs in order to fight Hamas. This is not only our right of self-defense, but a duty of self-defense in the wake of what is now the world's worst terror attack after 9-11. The death toll itself is half of 9-11. That speaks volumes in absolute terms. And the United States stands by our side. And we're very grateful not only for the moral support, but also for the tangible military support and making sure that the IDF has all the means that it needs. As for the question of uh, humanitarian uh, aid, Israel wants to see humanitarian aid reach the people of Gaza, uh, but uh, that humanitarian aid needs to be delivered under frameworks that guarantee safeguards that the aid not be directed to uh, the militants, the terrorists inside the Gaza Strip, and to uh, Hamas. Uh, this is Israel's right under international law to the extent that humanitarian aid is facilitated, that it not be requisitioned by the enemy. As we saw just the other day when UNRWA, a UN agency, uh, the UN Palestinian Refugee Agency, tweeted before hastily deleting it that Hamas had in fact stolen fuel and medicine from UNRWA's own stockpiles inside the Gaza Strip. Now, those 24,000 liters of fuel would have been enough to power Gaza's desalination plants for six days. It is shocking and atrocious that Hamas terrorists have been stealing uh, resources from the United Nations, and Israel expects and deserves and has every right under international law to safeguards to make sure that any humanitarian aid reaches the people it is supposed to reach and that it not reach uh, the militants, uh, the terrorists, and Israel has been very clear. We have been working since the start of the war with our international partners to create humanitarian frameworks in the south of the Gaza Strip so that those Palestinian residents in the north who heed Israel's warning to temporarily evacuate what is going to be a very difficult combat zone receive the humanitarian aid they need. That is, of course, uh, in everyone's interest, but we must ensure that the aid not reach the hands of Hamas and it's uh, the continuation of its genocidal campaign of terror against our country. Next question, please. We have a question, to what extent is Israel willing to allow non-combatants uh, to leave Gaza? First of all, it's important to understand that there is one civilian crossing between the Gaza Strip and Israel, and it no longer exists. On the morning of October 7th, at the start of the October 7th massacre, Hamas terrorists forced their way into the Arrows Crossing, which Israel had built at enormous expense in order to allow people in and out of the Gaza Strip every day. Tens of thousands of Palestinian workers had been leaving the Gaza Strip to come and work in Israel. That crossing has been completely destroyed. Kogat, the coordinator of government activities in the territories, has made footage of the destruction uh, and the massacre inside the Arrows Crossing available for everyone to see. It's there on their social media. You can reach out to their spokesperson too. The only crossing between Israel uh, and the Gaza Strip does not exist anymore. That is not an option. As for Rafah, I can tell you with absolute certainty that the other night, the modalities, the arrangements were in place for foreign nationals to leave the Gaza Strip in full coordination, and that it was in fact Hamas that prevented uh, these foreign nationals from leaving the Gaza Strip, effectively therefore using foreign nationals as hostages 
inside the Gaza Strip, in addition to the 200 innocent men, women, children who are also being held hostage by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad inside the Gaza Strip. Next question. We have a question regarding humanitarian aid. Can we specify what sort of guarantees would be required to uh, satisfy Israel's security needs? I'm not going to get into the specific details of demands, how we're going to ensure that humanitarian aid not reach Hamas terrorists, but I will tell you those safeguards will have to be stronger than the safeguards that were in place after the 2014 war. After Operation Protective Edge, Israel worked together with the Palestinian Authority and the United Nations to set up the Gaza reconstruction mechanism and ensure that civilians whose homes had been damaged as a result of that conflict over the summer of 2014 were able to get building supplies. And those building supplies were systematically diverted towards Hamas. Only a few days ago, we saw images of Hamas boasting that it was digging up water pipes that had been donated, of course, with uh, immense taxpayer international aid, using them to convert them into rockets and fire them at Israel. So uh, the international community will, I'm sure, uh, draw the appropriate lessons from the failure of previous oversight mechanisms and understand that the brutal, barbaric, genocidal campaign of terror that Hamas has been waging against Israel and the people of Israel cannot be allowed in any way to benefit from a single dollar, euro, or pound of international humanitarian aid in order to fuel their war machine. It must reach the people of Gaza, those who heed Israel's warning to temporarily evacuate the north and move to the designated humanitarian zones as the IDF specified in the map that it released this morning. Next question. We have a question about the death uh, toll at the Gaza hospital blast. Uh, look, I will say one thing. Uh, we are now in day 12 of the war and Israel is still identifying and trying to count the absolute number of victims who were murdered in the October 7th massacre. It's been 12 days and we still haven't identified anyone. I think any uh, journalists who rushed to judgment based on a claim made by Hamas 20 minutes after the blast should ask very serious questions about why those numbers were not independently verified first. It would simply be impossible 20 minutes after a blast to use data provided by the Gaza Health Ministry, which is Hamas, which is ISIS, in order to make allegations of civilian casualties. What we now see from the video that has been released by the IDF is that the extent of the damage is considerably smaller than what was being reported in those very hasty reports uh, last night. And I would urge foreign media to treat with extreme skepticism any information that is coming out of the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. We're talking about a small band of territory controlled by an authoritarian jihadist group that brooks no dissent, that allows no free speech, that is deliberately waging a war of misinformation and propaganda against Israel, that has an interest in inflating casualty numbers because they generate international sympathy, and that international sympathy advances its own war goals. Uh, the Hamas, the Gaza Health Ministry, is the Hamas Health Ministry. Hamas is ISIS. You would not report on uh, ISIS in uh, Syria, for example, as being the Raqqa Health Ministry. And when you quote Palestinian officials in Gaza, you're quoting Hamas, and you wouldn't quote ISIS as Syrian health uh, officials. And Israel would expect the international community as well to treat with the same caution any claims coming from Hamas as they would from ISIS, because as Hamas proved in the massacre of October 7th, uh, its brutality and sheer cruelty and inhumanity are far exceed what we saw from ISIS. Next question, please. We have a question about uh, Secretary of State Blinken saying one of the purposes of the 
president's visit is to receive a comprehensive brief of Israel's war aims. Israel is, of course, the United States' greatest friend in this region, if not the world. The United States is our closest and strongest ally, and we are tightly coordinated with the Americans. President Biden has been very clear and forthright since the very beginning of this war that Israel has a right and a duty to defend itself. It is very clear that he cares about Israel very deeply, that he is committed to helping Israel eliminate this ISIS-like, Nazi-like threat uh, from Hamas. And Israel looks forward to continuing to work with the United States in order to advance uh, that aim as we enter what, as the President, as uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said, is going to be a, a long and hard slog ahead. Uh, we have a question from uh, David Isaac at uh, JNS about uh, American supplies for Israel and humanitarian aid. Uh, look, these are two completely separate issues. President Biden has been very clear from the first moment that the United States will make sure that Israel has all the supplies that it needs in order to fight this ISIS-like terrorist regime. At the same time, Israel has also been clear that we have an interest in seeing humanitarian aid be delivered to the citizens, to the civilians of Gaza, under safeguards to make sure that it not reach Hamas in the areas uh, for people who have heeded Israel's warning to flee the combat zones. These are two separate issues, and the United States' support for Israel's security uh, in this fight against Hamas is absolutely uh, rock solid. And of course, our interest in seeing uh, that Palestinian civilians not be uh, unduly harmed by the war that Hamas has waged on us is also rock solid. Uh, we have a question about the number of Argentinian casualties in the October 7th massacre. Um, the October 7th massacre was, as we said, a crime against humanity, not only because of its barbarity, but because of the sheer number of foreign nationals who were affected. We're talking about uh, nationals of over foreign states who were either murdered, abducted, or injured. The latest figures that we have from the police are that 17 Argentinian uh, civilians were murdered, eight are uh, missing. For further details, we would advise you to refer to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Do we have any more questions? Uh, we have a question about the timing of uh, the president's visit. Uh, Israel has been clear from the very beginning that we are united and consolidated around one goal. That goal is victory, victory against Hamas. This is a war that we were forced into. It's a war that we are going to win. Yeah, the next stage in the campaign will be difficult. It will be hard. It will be painful. Unfortunately, uh, it will be necessary. And we're very grateful for the support that President Biden has given us and that solidarity uh, coming here. Really an extraordinary, extraordinary gesture by the President of the United States visiting a foreign country that is actively at war, standing with us in solidarity and really giving a loving embrace for every family whose lives have been wrecked by the massacre, every soldier on the front, every Israeli civilian who is concerned about uh, what comes next. And with that solidarity, with that support, we are going to continue with that campaign to fight against Hamas and to dismantle its military and governing structures. Do we have any more questions? No, in which case I would like to thank everyone for joining us for the daily briefing and from us here at the Prime Minister's office, please everyone, please stay safe and uh, we'll see you same time tomorrow. Thank you.